Hey, I'm Suzanne Caldera with Guaranteed Rate. And who knows, maybe you were just randomly Googling mortgages or just randomly found me or you're one of my followers on YouTube. Uh, but today I am delighted that I get to speak to Jason Scott. Uh, the beauty of our company is that we have so many amazing originators that are working at such a high level. Uh, but this guy truly inspired me. And I said, I got to get you on video to just share a little bit about you and your story. And Jason, thanks for saying yes. Well, thank you, Suzanne. I appreciate it. I know your military background uh, means a ton to you. And, um, you know, you know, you're wearing it proudly uh, on your shirt. But I would love for you to talk about that and um, sure. share that. Uh, OK, so first off, I'm an introvert by nature. Um, most people can't believe that. Um, I, I, my adaptive trait is to be extroverted. Uh, you know, I did 20 years in the Army, uh, multiple combat tours to both Iraq and Afghanistan, which led to um, making it even more difficult. If, if you're an introvert to begin with, right? Like, um, and then just going through some of the stuff that I've gone through um, that, you know, I still deal with today. Um, I'm a much better person now than I was seven years ago. I always tell everybody that. Uh, nobody liked Jason and Jason didn't even like Jason back then to include my wife because um, I had to seek help and stuff of that nature. Right. But um, yes, I am not, believe it or not, I'm not a, a, a big fan of gatherings or crowds and stuff of that nature, but I force myself to do these things. Um, I, I love my time in the army. I, I tell everybody I didn't join for anything grand and glorious. Like, you know, most people say, Oh, I, I wanted to defend my country. You know, the, the short of it all is that I literally, was in the National Guard. That's how I started in my military career to help pay off debt from college uh, because I got hurt going to college and couldn't, couldn't, you know, I didn't get a, a scholarship to continue and I had to pay for my own, own schooling. Um, and then I went from the National Guard to the Army because I went through a very bad um, marriage slash divorce. And um, my battalion commander at the time was also my divorce attorney, which kind of worked out. That's kind of how weird the National Guard community is back then. Um, was like, Jay, you got to do something before you do something that you can't take back. And I had a really bad temper, a lot of stuff like that. So I joined the army um, with the intent of doing maybe two to three years to literally refocus some of that energy. And then when I got into the army, I really loved what I did. And next thing you know, 20 years go by, right? Uh, I was fortunate enough my last year and a half in the army after buying my second home, using my Viet Home Loan benefit, uh, the lender at the time um, was someone that I really looked up to. A uh, keyword was, and that'll make sense later on. But um, he was like the older brother I never had. And he asked me, he's like, Jay, what are you going to do post service? And because of my um, accolades and experience, I could have worked for pretty much any three letter acronym agency out there. Uh, but I would have been gone all the time, right? Because I wanted to retire in Hawaii. And he's like, well, Jay, you're gonna be gone. Why don't you come work for me? And I thought, I said, dude, I do not want to do commission sales. No, thank you. And he got really pissed off and he's like, bro, did I ever sell you anything? And I had to think about it for a moment. And I was like, well, no, not, not really. He's like, yeah, dude, I just educated you. And he's like, here's the deal. You teach people how to shoot, move and communicate in different languages all over the world. Mortgage is another language and you understand the math and you'd be really good at teaching people this. I think you'd be really good at this. So of course I asked my wife what she thought and she was at the time she was working for the DFI, which those of us that are in the industry know what that is. Right. Um, and she was like, yeah, babe, I think you'd be great. So fast forward now, seven years in the industry after uh, I, I basically went to work at a previous company, um, was their top guy and then was recruited by guaranteed rate three years into that. Um, part of the reason why I said I thought he was like a big brother is because he always preached about an abundance mindset and how supporting people that want to grow, even if it's not with them, will come to find out you, he supports them as long as they stick with what his, his line is. Right. And, um, just found out that that was not the best fit. We were able to make a clean break. Um, Rory, my business partner, uh, who's been with me since, I mean, we both started about the same time, um, in the industry within a few months, um, came with me and we just rearview mirror, just put our foot down and, uh, put our foot on the gas and just just move forward and like i said here we are you know seven years in the industry i'm still considered a pub by by most accounts for people who've been in this industry have seen my kind of success they, they're just like wow i can't believe you've done it so quickly and i attribute that to one being very transparent direct you know i retired as an e7 for a reason i couldn't keep my mouth shut and i 
just really couldn't navigate diplomatic um, conversations <laughs> is the best way to put it. Um, and as you know, as you've seen me on some of our calls at the company, I'm, I, I might let an F-bomb go once in a while or um, I'm not afraid to call a spade a spade, but, but yeah, that's the biggest part of it. And then surrounding myself with people that believe in the same mission and vision. Um, I have a lot of veterans that we've hired and brought on as teammates. I hate to use the word as employee, but obviously we know the legal term that is what it is, but they are truly my teammates. Um, and we all are committed to a serving mentality. Uh, we read a good book, Roy and I did uh, quite a few years ago called The Go-Giver by Bob Berg. Um, and that's really the mantra or the culture that we've created. And here we are, you know, we've got a very successful branch in Hawaii. We're opening up this new branch in Colorado Springs. And it's just, it's really awesome to see the growth. And, you know, we brought on additional veterans, right? People that have transitioned or retired, people that were previous clients of mine and then said, Jay, I want to be a part of this, right? And now they're succeeding. And it's just, it's just really awesome to see. It requires a lot of hard work though. I mean, people see the success now and they don't realize that it's a culmination of seven years of continuous grit and dedication to the craft and dedication to the clients and your referral partners. Um, and you can't stop. Like, um, you also have to be willing to pivot and evolve. Um, and when people are zigging, you got to be able to zag, right? And take risks, right? That's part of the business. Um, and I, I just never have been a follower <laughs> ever. <laughs> if anything I do in my life, um, I like to be that, that cavalier, like that, that person that's up front, um, blazing the trails. And, you know, sometimes it doesn't work, but that's okay. We learn from it again any mistake or misstep opportunity that didn't, didn't work out. We looked at it as a, an opportunity to grow or, or learn from and, and go from there. You've been open about it on some of the calls of, of those times when, <laughs> you know, when you didn't like yourself and, and you couldn't stand Jason. Um, are you open to sharing about that? You know, after multiple tours, you know, um, I was a door kicker, right? Um, I, I did a lot of bad things to bad people. Um, and then you know, a lot of things, bad, good, whatever, indifferent um, happen while you're on deployment. I mean, combat's not not cool. I mean, it's a movie, I mean, but it's it's not a movie. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's just hard to explain, but i um, been put in situations to where a lot of people are like, Jay, how did you survive all that? And honestly, I think it's a similar answer to anybody else. You stop worrying about yourself and worry about someone else, because if you can solve someone else's problems or if you can take care of them, then your stuff seems to disappear, right? But that's just a form of suppression. And eventually when you're no longer in that environment, that stuff comes out, right? Um, and, you know, aggressive tendencies, um, hostility. Uh, I hate to use the word triggers, but that's, you know, that's the case. There, there's there's things that trigger me to this day. Um, I mean, shoots. One of these books I'm reading right now, it's called How to Deal with People You Can't Stand. Um, it's something that my wife gave me because there's certain personality traits that trigger me, but then I realized, crap, I'm, I can also be these personalities too to, towards someone, right? So. It's about continuous growth, but yeah, I, um, the, what pulled me out of the black hole was my wife one day, and keep in mind, this is my third marriage, and it's the longest I've been ever married to one person, um, and she's been my rock. Um, she's amazing. She basically just came up to me and she's like, babe, <clears throat> as long as you don't give up, I'll never leave your side. And that really just, I mean, took 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 the breath, my breath away and just floored me because I never had anybody really say that. Um, or and mean it, and uh, so I had to seek help. I tell everybody I went to the nut house, right? Um, I went through a program that they have in the army, and I think they have it. It's pretty much for all branches of service. Where I had to go and seek help, and I was such a jumbled up mess that the director of the program, who was a retired captain in the navy, so that's an 06, um, personally said, "I'm taking you on as my client per se." It's the best way of putting it, right? Where he normally he was the director, like he normally didn't have, you know, delegated audit review, but he personally took me on every day, the whole time I was there. And it was like playing mental chess against someone that I was going to lose every day. And I did just to break me down. He was literally trying to break me down to get me to get rid of some of these barriers and these walls and perceptions. Um, and then to teach me and give me the tools on how to make myself a better person. And I was also the first person that demanded that my wife was there at least once a week for these joint counseling sessions, which that kind of blew his mind, but he loved it. And it's something that I guess they've started to implement after where, because it's also important that the spouse understands um, what you went through, what you're going through, how you interpret things and, and how you are uh, 
through a, an actual licensed professional that, that can explain that, right? Kind of like having an interpreter. So, um, which really helps strengthen our marriage as well. I think there's a power when you share your pain and you share your story and it resonated with me because, um, you know, I'll, I'll put this out there and it's on YouTube. Like I got interviewed from uh, by a good friend of mine years ago and um, I've had success in the mortgage industry, not your level or not like a lot of people's level in this industry. And I haven't been in war but mine was being an addict and um, oh, wow. a very high, yeah. a very high functioning one for a long time. And I wow. uh, uh, got to a point where, um, you know, I would just kind of look down on people like, that's not me. I don't drink at work. But meanwhile, I come home and just numb the shit out of myself. And yep. um, once I finally checked myself into rehab and, you know, just realized uh, what I was, um, I just realized that, um, you know, you, you got to be open to that because you never know who you're going to touch and what you shared. It just touched me. And I'm like, if I can put this out there, maybe there's somebody who's struggling or because not a lot of guys like you're a dude, you're a dude's dude, you know, like not <laughs> a lot of guys will, will share that. And uh, it, it, you're it, right. It touched me. It really did. <laughs> wow. Um, well, it's, I mean, I, I can't take credit for any of that. Literally, it was my wife. I mean, honestly, if my wife wouldn't have had that conversation with me, I, we wouldn't be having this conversation today. I'm sure my, my life would have taken a, a different path, right? So I'm very fortunate I had the, had the right support system, the right person in my life at the right time. And a lot of folks, whether you're a, a dude or a gal um, that served, were, if you've ever, if you've been in there, any certain amount of period of time or serve any type of leadership position. And even the junior leaders, if they're not official leadership positions, you're taught to, to train two levels up to always be the next, next man or next person up. Right. Um, and to, you know, to solve problems at the lowest level. Um, so you're naturally geared to think, well, why do I need anybody else to help me? I can figure this out. I know, I know myself better than, than, than anyone. Right. And that's really not the case. And then the pride comes in. Um, and a lot of people, you know, I didn't want to ask for help. Um, like I said, if, it, if my wife wouldn't have, wouldn't have stepped in. Um, and part of the reason why she stepped in is, so I was deployed in Afghanistan. I had just gotten blown up again that day. Um, I had been blown up multiple times in that deployment. I and mean, I'm lucky to be alive right now. One of our sons ha had a problem with um, addiction and some other things. And while being, now here's the deal. He was my son from my first marriage. And I didn't have any other children other than that. My wife has a son from a previous marriage, but they're both our boys. It's the best way to put it, right? So, so my son from the first marriage, uh, you know, I'm deployed to Afghanistan. Wife is in, um, you know, we've only been married a little over a year at this point. And then my son had decided to run away from his mom's house. So then we decided to scoop him up and bring him in. So not only are you newly married, but I'm deployed and you're dealing with a, a teenage boy, you know, 15 that has chemical addiction problems, right? And what's the stuff that goes along with that, you know, stealing, uh, lying, all kinds of stuff, right? She's like, babe, I've got to lock the door in my bedroom at night. I'm going to bring my purse in. Kaden, sorry, my son keeps um, coming and going um, and she doesn't feel safe. And I was like, all right, put them on. And when he got on there, I was like, what the fuck? You're supposed to be the man. I mean, I, like, I, I literally, I drilled into him. I basically said, look, I'm not going to lose my wife, the love of my life, because you're going to be an ass clown. If you're going to be an ass clown, go back to your mom. And that's probably not the best message to say to your son, who's obviously needing help and stuff of that nature. But after that conversation, within three weeks, um, he had left and moved back to live with his mom. And when I did return from deployment, we got him back. But I mean, it was a, it was a long, tough road. And so there's things I've done that I'm just, I feel ashamed and, and I don't ever forget it. So that's why today I always try to work really hard um, to be a better person, I guess is the best way of putting it. Thanks for the, uh, for the openness, um, you know, it's, it's endearing uh, and just how much uh, that you've been through. Uh, and obviously you've got that server's heart with, um, you know, with how you run your business uh, and, you know, how you're ethical and how you do the right thing uh, for uh, for your clients. And I remember, I think it was one of the calls where we had a VA call and you were talking about, you know, when you're dealing with a vet, you know, they can sniff out the bullshit. And I'm sure you see that. Yeah. It must It must infuriate you. Um, naturally, we can't mention other other lenders, but I, I think you know, not yeah. everyone will, 
will work the same way, uh, will work the same way that we work uh, or yeah. that you work. And, you know, you're making an impact. Well, thank you. Um, and yeah, I do agree. Um, that's why I focus a lot of my energies, you know, Rory um, and everyone in our shop. We always talk about top down, bottom up development, you know, the good idea fairy, uh, as we used to call it in the military, doesn't always have good ideas. Um, and very seldom do good ideas actually come from the top because we have a, you know, a paradigm of a certain view of way we, we see things. And so if you're not willing to embrace views from all sides, um, you're really going to limit your growth. Um, but so what we've, you know, when we joined Guaranteed Rate, you know, again, we went from being the top at one company and then having to come and rebrand, start all over. We knew it was going to be about a three-year process before we saw the numbers that um, we were used to seeing mainly because uh, we were coming to a great company, but unfortunately in the location where we were at, they had a tarnished brand already. They just had the wrong people uh, within the company. So, you know, we had, you know, we had tried to uh, assimilate them into what, what the way we do things that just didn't work out. So we let them go. Um, but by the second year, you know, through acquisitions uh, of the big dog, um, Victor, they, they bought another company in Hawaii that was well known uh, and their culture was great. I mean, our leadership there and, and our peers that worked there, uh, it took about a year from that. So that was a year two. And by year three, we were just, everybody's just hammering. And, and today it's just nuts. I mean, we've grown tremendously. Our region's ridiculous. We're helping a lot of folks. Um, when we first joined, you know, Guaranteed Rate really, I tell everybody this, in 2016, Guaranteed Rate did over, did over, did just under 416 million in VA volume. Fast forward, you know, four years and we did over 4.8 billion with a B, right? Um, so when people come in and they, they want to get on the, the complaining train, I'm like, guys, you don't even know what it was like four years ago. You don't realize the vast bounds of improvements that we've done and the commitment from the top down at guaranteed rate to serve our veterans and make it a better experience. So when you're not working, what's, uh, what's, what's fun for you when you're not hanging out with family or the grandkids? So okay. I tell everybody this, uh, I work all the time, but it's because I love what I do. So there really isn't, you know, like I, I literally work seven days a week. Now, granted, I've invested into systems and stuff to allow me to take like what I call white space or some free time. So when I'm in Hawaii, you know, Sundays, we normally, we block off about five hours of the day to go take the boat out and just go chill and veg out, you know, like to golf um, here in Colorado Springs, you know, the weather's you couldn't ask for better winter weather. It snows for two days and then it melts and then it's warm and then it snows. I mean, like, I was like, this is the best winter weather ever. So I haven't had a chance to really um, try some of the cool stuff, but I mean, they've got shooting ranges here. I love to shoot. Obviously I'm very good at it. Um, so all of my, my weapon systems I brought here to Colorado because they have bigger ranges to where I can test my abilities and stuff, which is kind of cool. Um, and then because I am an introvert by nature, we like to do things, we have a very, tight circle of friends um, that we consider our family. So my work family is my family. As far as I'm concerned, my clients are my family. Um, so those are the types of people and those are the people that I like to do stuff with. Uh, my referral partners, I'm not the guy that does a lot of volume by having a ton of realtors on my Rolodex. I have a, a strong handful that are like super close. So like people that we would go vacation with because we have like minds. Um, and then a few others that we really like that we'll do things occasionally, but. I like to get to know everyone that I'm involved with. And, you know, if you've got a Rolodex of 150 realtors, how can you really get to know every single one of them? That, that would be very difficult. Thank you. Seriously, thank you so much uh, for saying yes and uh, just sharing a lot of your story. And, um, you know, you, you've definitely made an impact. And obviously I look forward to seeing you on a sharing success call or anytime that I see your name come up. Uh, it's really Well, cool. hopefully we'll, we'll get to meet at the next, you know, Presence Club vacation that we ever had. You know, yeah. COVID stuff, right?